Where the hell have I been? Uh, yeah, I haven't been releasing much content on the channel lately, and there's a good reason for that. I, uh, I've been having some technical problems. Um, a little bit of the whole, uh, EP depression too, but mostly technical issues. It started when I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, and I would be able to play for a good long while, and then just randomly the game would crash. Now I have an AMD graphics card, a, uh, a 5600 XT, and, you know, AMD cards, the new ones that are out now are a lot better than they used to be. The drivers are a lot better than they used to be. Um, AMD's drivers, or back when they were ATI, were kind of crap. And they weren't quite as powerful as NVIDIA's graphics cards. In fact, they weren't as powerful. They were... They were good. They were okay. But NVIDIA was always more powerful. Mm. It's still the same way. AMD cards still lag a little behind uh, NVIDIA in a lot of those cases. And some of their cards, some of their newer cards, are starting to approach the uh, 30, 3080 in performance. And the one I had is just a touch, just a touch, slightly less than the 1080. But, uh, I started developing a problem where Horizon Zero Dawn would crash a lot more frequently. I would be able to play for a little while, and then suddenly the game would freeze and crash, and I would get driver timeouts. I would also occasionally get DirectX errors in Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV hardly ever crashes. That game is, like, solid as a frickin' brick. And it hardly ever crashes. I think maybe Tigra crashes once a year with that game. And I crashed multiple times with Final Fantasy. I'd maybe when I, if I'm playing it constantly, I'll maybe get one or two a week or a month. And I was playing the game, I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, when the game really crashed hard. I have a dual monitor set up, and both screens went black. And I had to uh, reboot the machine. And when I came back up, my second screen wasn't working. It wasn't working at all. And so I unplugged it. It's Connected via a display port to HDMI because this is not a display port monitor. And so I, un I unplugged it from the display port that it was in and plugged it back in. Wouldn't work. So my main screen uh, was also using a similar cable, a display port to HDMI. So I unplugged it from there and plugged it into that port, and it's a different screen. And it kept blinking. It kept coming on, then going off. Coming on, going off. Coming. What the hell did this game do to my card? So, luckily I had another display port, uh, port, uh, port on the card. So I plugged the uh, port in, and I was able to get both my screens back. Plus my HDMI for my VR, because I have a HTC Vive that plugs in via HDMI still works just fine. But I still kept having the problem with Horizon Zero Dawn where I would be able to play it for a few minutes and then it would crash. It would have a driver timeout and, and stuff on the screen would be corrupted and I would have to reboot the computer. Then uh, Tigra uh, wanted me to get into playing Star Citizen with them again. 
And so, you know, I hadn't played it in a long time, and I've been wanting to get back into Star Citizen, and I'm, I'm going to be get back, getting back into streaming the game. I wanted to do that. So I go into the game, and we're playing, and then randomly, for no reason whatsoever, I'm in, I'm in an area, and I'm getting like 30-something frames per second, which is pretty normal for Star Citizen, because the current rendering engine is not that well optimized and it's not going to be optimized at all they're not going to fix it because they're replacing it with the gen 12 render and they're going to be switching from direct x to vulcan at some point and i'm hoping that's what they're going to announce at citizen con but um i would randomly get really really steep steep dips in frame rate i mean i would go from like 40 40 to 1.1 or 0 0.8 or something frame rates and so we use a command use a file with a bunch of commands in it to uh display some information on the screen for um, my frame rate and also render the render frame render thread and everything so what would happen is when my frame rate tanked, my CPU usage would drop like a stone. It would go from uh, typically running the game, I would the CPU load um, running the game on Star Citizen would be about 50%. I mean this is, this is a, um, a Ryzen 5 3600, not a 3600X, it's a 3600 and I bought it because it was at the time the best CPU for gaming. So I bought that and it doesn't tax my CPU that much in order to run the game. And so I saw when my frame rate dipped really low, my CPU usage would drop down to idle. And the render thread on my GPU would like shoot up like normally it would be like 10 12 milliseconds it would jump up to like a thousand something it's like what the hell is going on in the game that would cause the render thread to go that long and I would the game would turn into a slideshow like every Every two or three seconds, I would see a frame change. Sometimes I could clear it up by alt-tabbing out and coming back in, and the frame rate would go back to 30, 35, 40, which is normal. And then just randomly, random, even in an area where the frame rates are not that bad, boom. I would stop cold moving and my the game would turn into a slideshow and if it went on long enough I'd get a driver timeout the game would crash and that happened a lot and it happened enough so bad that I couldn't play the game with Tigra and Dave we couldn't play the game with one another it got that bad so I went online and I searched all over the place. I I downloaded the uh, device driver uninstaller, went into safe mode, removed the AMD driver completely, reinstalled it from scratch. I used Uncle Carrie's um, AMD chipset notifier to download and install the latest chipset drivers for my motherboard. Uh, that's a um, it's a fr it's a free tool, but uh, you can donate some money to it to for development. Uh, it's being developed by a YouTuber. I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the video description if you want to use it. And so I updated my chipset, and I cleared my cache. I cleared the prefetch files. I deleted the shader folder for. Uh, for the game, I did everything short of doing a character wipe. 
I, I still couldn't figure out what was causing this problem. I did disk cleanup, everything. And I have the game on an SSD, which you really need to have Star Citizen on an SSD because the um, streaming data that it does, where it, instead of loading everything on all one big chunk, it just loads it as it needs it. It needs high speed a connection to that data. And so it does, it needs an SSD. I had it on an M.2. I thought maybe, maybe my M.2 drive might be having, might be getting problems. So I moved the game from the M.2 over to the SSD that I put Final Fantasy XIV on. And same thing, same problems. So I got to the point to where I started to suspect it was the graphics card that was the problem. Because, well, for one thing, one of the display ports went out, wouldn't work. That was a major red flag, and that would have been bad. In fact, it was bad. It was the graphics card. It was really, really bad. Because graphics card prices, GPU prices, are stupid right now. Why? Because the entire world's electronics industry is dependent on a tiny handful of companies to supply the materials needed to make components. Only one company in the entire world manufactures silicon crystals, the, the, the big cylindrical silicon crystals that they slice with a diamond uh, saw that turn into wafers to make chips. Only one company produces those. The crystals pure enough to be used for microchips. And only a small handful of companies make other components. And with all the BS that's going on right now, you know, with the human malware scam and everything, and with um, scalpers buying up stuff and selling it at massive prices, it is extremely hard to get your hands on most electronics, particularly PC stuff like graphics cards, unless you want to pay the scalper's price, like a car, like a, a graphics card that should only cost about 300, you know, 300 to 400 bucks, going on eBay for over a thousand. That's pretty stupid, and then you're stupid for paying that price. If you bought one from a scalper. Anyway, I knew I, I, I was facing that. And I just don't have the money to replace a graphics card. I would ha and if I saved up for it, it would take me well over a year to do it. At the current prices. Even, even at slightly lower prices than what the scalpers are scalping everybody for. You know, it would be something like 800 in order to get a 2060. 2060 super clock or, or, or overclocked card from EBGA or MSI. Uh, I think there were some Zotac cards that were some NVIDIA Zotac cards that were 800 instead of 1,000. So I had, I had that prospect where I would have to fork out a fuck ton of money I didn't have in order to get another graphics card in order to be able to play games and be able to make content on this channel. And you know, I'm not getting paid for this channel. I'm not making money off of it. Anyway... Uh, anyway, so I asked Tiger for a little help. We were going to try some other cards that we had lying around and to see if it was indeed my graphics card. So, unplugged my whole machine and pulled it out of a place where I have it. And he had a spare GTX 1080 laying around. He had a 1080 Ti, but it was a humongous thing. It wouldn't fit in my case. 
So we put in a 1080. It's a um, EVGA 1080 super clock card. Looked it up compared to my AMD card. My AMD card is slightly better than it in certain areas, but the 1080 is better in other facets. And so we put it in, and I hooked it all up, started up Star Citizen, and no frame rate dips. No sudden drops. Maybe... The frame rate would drop down into the 20s in some places, but in places where I would get a slideshow, it was smooth as silk, even when the frame rate dipped. So it was my graphics card. Something happened to it. When it crashed and took out the second screen, when that, when that port went out, something else went out. And so whenever the card gets really pushed, and Star Citizen pushes the GPU big time. Uh, not because of heavy rendering. It does a lot of other compute stuff in the background, too, uh, along with it. And a lot of other load is on the server. The server really handles way too much. Uh, more on that later. I'll be doing another video uh, with TigerCon. We'll be, we'll be talking in depth about... Uh, Star Citizen, um, a lot of details about the game because there's a big patch coming that's going to fundamentally change a lot of things. But uh, it was the card. It was the graphics card. And this was a spare graphics card that was just laying around. It was laying on the shelf in there with a bunch of other computer parts we have. There was my old, five, my old um, RX 570 was in there uh there was an old six set there was an old nvidia 670 in there that we used to have on a server and the server that we are currently using for mb which is a competitor to plex that has a couple of 1080s in it so he basically said you can have this card you can keep it it was his old graphics card that he had in his machine before he upgraded to a 2080. He has a 2080 in his in his machine that he plays Final Fantasy and Star Citizen in. And so I have a new 1080. EVGA 1080 Superclock. And Star Citizen Move the silk. We played. We played for like several hours last night. We were doing some. Um, we were trying to do some trading. We did a few box missions in order to build up some funds to do some trading with. The only the one thing that stopped us is the servers. The servers are crashing. And again, as I said, we're gonna have a video later where we discuss why that happens and the new patch that's coming up that should definitely fix it because they're doing some certain things that are going to that are going to resolve those issues because they these issues are happening for a reason when you understand uh, why they happen and these are technologies that CIG has been working on for quite a while to get it right resolve these and so there's a lot of components in the game that they're not going to fix because they're replacing them with something new and that's what's going to be happening in 315 anyway uh, moving on with this I've got a new graphics card so a lot of stuff that I'd been on hold do um, doing like uh, I did manage to get out I did manage to record another half-life Alex so I'm going to be editing that, and maybe my editing will be better. Maybe my editing software will work better uh, with this card. Hopefully. I use HitFilm. I think it does use the GPU for, for rendering. So we'll see if the rendering is better, this card or not. Um, I did have issues playing 
Half-Life Alex in VR. Um, this was after all this stuff happened with the, you know, the second screen going out and Star Citizen having issues and everything. It played, but I did have hitches and other other things going on while I was playing the game. Where normally it usually didn't. VR games usually don't give me trouble. And it just did. And so I'm curious to see what will happen when I go to play it with my 1080. Now that I have a 1080. Now that's an older card. It's a few generations back. But, you know, it's still a good card. It's still um, definitely powerful enough to handle the games that I play or the games that I stream so we'll see what happens there so um, pretty soon I'm going to be starting back a lot of stuff that has been on hold because of all these problems Beat Saber um, releasing more Half-Life Alex episodes until I finish that and then um, I will be considering what other games to Stream. I have a Blade and Sorcery, which is a pretty gory VR game, a fantasy RPG game. I have uh, Boneworks. I have the Knuckles controllers now. Um, I those came from Tigra because he bought an Index. He already has the Knuckles controllers that he bought separately. So he gave me the ones that he got with the index, and so I can use those to play Boneworks properly with the motion, the finger sensors. They're not quite as 100% accurate as I thought they would be, but it's still pretty, pretty interesting, and it's, and it's easier to use than the wands with that game. You can play Boneworks with the wands, but it's not ideal. So I'll be doing play playthroughs of more VR games. Uh, I will be getting back into some more Final Fantasy. I've been wanting to do some New World too, but New World's been having some launch issues, so I may wait on that. There is the expansion for Elder Scrolls Online that I've been wanting to get into. So... Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I've been wanting to do. And so now I have a new graphics card. And the issues I've been having with this machine have been resolved. A lot of them have disappeared after switching out cards. Something was just going wrong. This RX 5600 XT. Something seriously wrong. I don't know what it is. Was it something in the GPU that went went bad was it, it something in the power delivery that was going bad i have no idea what it was it was just um if i didn't constantly reboot my machine and when i played different games the game would eventually crash or have performance issues and, and that, that's all done and over with now so I'm using NVIDIA now. I'm sticking with the AMD processor because that's a really good CPU. Well, it's a 8-core, 16-thread CPU. It's still pretty good for gaming. So I'm back, and I'll be doing more content again. And also, um, you know, I talked with Daniel over at Gamers Bay, and he wants me to do some more content for him there, so I'll be doing more there, more retro stuff. So I'm going to be a little busy, so I'm back. This is why I haven't done much in a while, because I've been dealing with these technical issues. But I'm back. See you later.